This is a little pattern I got from Petals to Picots, P I C O T S dot com. It's a textured dishcloth design and it's very simple. It's one single crochet and two double crochets. One single crochet, two double crochets. Then they turn and they go back in that direction with one single crochet, two double crochets. And it gives you this crisscross kind of growing flower type pattern. Okay, pause for a minute. This is that same pattern going back and forth so that the little flowerettes go in opposite directions. Then I'm working on a hat. Now, if I kept going in the same direction and I went only from the beginning single crochet and made my single crochet and two doubles going out like that, you would have this kind of effect. And If I take the single crochet from the top center of the flower, the top center, from the top center, do my single, double, double, come to the next top center of the flower underneath, do my single, double, double. I would have this kind of a pattern. And they would tend to line up with each other vertically this way. See, right over here. Now while I was doing this, I got the idea to see what it would look like if I did them all from the center. And I kind of like that. I think that's a nice color. It makes, it closes the holes up a little bit better too, I notice. Down here you have more holes. See, you have less holes here. But up here you have no holes and crisscross. And when I was going uh, backwards, this is my frontwards. I'm left handed. This is my frontwards. This is my backwards. This is my frontwards. The ones in back will pop out all the time. So when you come back, you have this popcorn type thing going on in the every other line if you wanted to do that. See on the back side all the way down you can see how they pop out. You might want to do that and turn it inside out and use that as the outside. That's pretty. There's just so much that you can do with these. This is what this one looks, the crisscross looks like from the back. This is what the one going right into the um, single crochet hole looks like from the back. And here's what the straight up and down going on top of each flower, each groupie looks like. Almost like a basket type look. Whereas the front, you can see the flowers better. So there's just a simple grouping, single crochet and two double crochets in the same hole. Skip two and repeat. But look at the different looks from there to there to there. You get just from those three doing the same pattern over and over again, but where you place it. In spite of the other interesting designs that came on this, that I tried on here, 
I'm going to hit, go ahead and continue with this design. I just finished the line. I'm ready to start the next one. And what I want to do is I'm going to slip stitch into this first stitch. Slip stitch into the top. Chain one, and I'm going to do a single crochet, double crochet, and another double crochet, all in the same stitch. See? the top of the in the top of the new pattern here. Now I'm going to go now if you were doing starting this off you would go take this stitch here three in the stitch you would go one two skipping two and go in the third stitch and look where we are the third stitch is the top of the pattern. <laughs> So we're gonna go just go right in there. Pull up our first single. Second stitch is a double. Our third stitch is a double. And if you skip two come up with right on the top of your pattern again. Go right into that stitch, pull up a loop, keep trying, I'm trying not to go out of pattern, out of frame here. Let's try that again. Go into that top loop, pull up a loop, complete your single crochet, wrap, Go into the same hole, do your double crochet, do another double crochet, skip two, which brings you back to the top of your next one. Slip through, complete your single crochet, and so on. You have your patterns lining right up there. We'll make a nice overall hat design. Hat design. Okay. Talk to you later. Here's the hat finished. My little model Susie here holding it for me. Get me back here, back of the head. Bring it down like this. Like that. When it gets cold, put it on the aftermarket so bring it down around the ears like that. Put it back in your neck. That's covered. The ears are covered. We'll stay warm under there. Okay. This is a scarf I haven't quite finished yet. Same colors, so I'll put it with it. This kind, one way to wear this, is to stick the ends in through here. You can see I haven't finished tying off the doohickeys yet.
around your neck. Pull this end down so it's right where you want it. Like that. All nice and warm. Covers the back of the neck. Hat comes over the hat. Hat over the ears. I don't care how cold it is. That's going to that's still to do a pretty good job of keeping you warm. Okay, here's another hat I've made. I make them pretty much the same way. I make all of them so that they can come down over the ears and on the back of the neck. And I make them so they're reversible so that you can wear it in a hat like that. You can wear it fold. Pull back all the way like that. Pull it up front. Off the back of the neck if you like. Kind of a little slouchy type funky thing going on here. Even wear half inside and half outside. Like that. This kind of little flamboyant little thing going on here. Anyway, that's how I like to make most of my hats. A little multi fashionable. This one I made as part of a set. along with the scarf. And all the hats, they come down, cover the ears, cover the back of the neck. And I like to make these skinnier scarves. They're about five feet long. Every one of them is about five feet long. Fold them in half. You wrap one end around. Put the bottoms of the others down through the top. It looks funky the other way. There. Close the back of the neck, back of the hat. You got a nice warm thing going on here. Okay. Did you hear, girl? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Here's a hat and scarf I did. This is made out of a a, a little box stitch. Uh, I like to watch Crochet Crowd. I would like to watch Mikey. And he made this. I mean, he he saw someone that made a V-stitch, uh, a V-shaped shawl. They started at one square on the bottom and then made two squares and then three squares and then four squares and so on until it got as big as they wanted. And he made a scarf the same way where he started out with one stitch and then two, and then three, and then so on. And when he got as wide as he wanted it, you go up one stitch and you work back, and then you go up and work back. So you're working like this and building your straight sides. He has a very good video on that, real clear. Well, being perverse, I had to do something different. So first I decided to try to make an infinity scarf, which came out pretty good. Took me two or three tries to get the beginning right. But here's an infinity scarf I made out of it with teal. These are all this pattern. 
And what I did was I go round and went in the same direction. And when you go double round, you come back to where you started. You go double round twice, come back to where you started. Each time I'd have to chain up, uh, pardon me, slip stitch up the side of the last square I did, chain three, and then go on from there. That worked for me. So I said, okay, if I could conquer that, I can conquer a hat. So I did the hat, and it was oh so easy. I started out with um, a triple, a double, a half double, a single. Slip stitch, and that becomes a chain four for the triple. Chain four, do a double, half double, single, slip stitch, chain four, chain four, double, half double, single, slip stitch into the next. So that's one, two, three, four. The slip stitch becomes the first. Chain four, that equals like a triple. Then you do a double crochet, a half double crochet, a single crochet, and slip stitch for your next chain. This became the little triangles from which I could make my squares come off this way. See this here? That's the square building off of it. See here? Right here? That's the square building off of it. That. So I went around with that. When I got to the bottom, I said, Oy vey, how do I make it straight? Because I wanted it straight. I didn't want it lumpy. So I did it in reverse. I did a single, a half double, a double, and a triple, and a single, and a half double, and a double, and a triple. All the way along, and then followed it up with a slip stitch trim all the way around. It turned out real nice. Oops. There we go. Give a little, little fashion statement in there, huh? Then I decided to make it straight. I decided if I did both of those, this would be a piece of cake. And boy, what a pain in the neck it was. The ends didn't come out right, so I had to keep adding on to the ends to make them come out straight enough to make an end on. So, like it would go here. All this is a good pattern. Here turned out okay. Here had to be added on. <laughs> it was a mess. But I ended up with, I, I managed to get my squares to make my ends off of. It wasn't easy. This one turned out a little better. This is more like how I wanted the other end to turn out. And then I did the same thing I did on the edges. The many, uh, longer and longer stitches, slip stitch, short, longer, 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 slip stitch, and then did my trim. Turned out pretty good. And they look well together. There we go. There's my girl. She's looking a little sassy, isn't she? I think she's tired of sitting here trying on all these things. What do you think? Looking a little pissed. And what else? some hats I don't have scars for, but I had some bits and pieces. I had a little teal left over. Plenty of turquoise. I made this one. Come here. 
Come on, baby. Come on. There we go. <laughs> oh, girl. You don't want to do this anymore, do you? There you go. She thinks it's a boy's hat and she's not happy with it. Fine. Be that way. You be nice to me or I won't comb your hair. And here's another set I made. You can even take this want to and just put it up under there. You don't have to have it sticking out. You can have it sticking under. And here's the scarf to go with it. This time I think I'll just wrap it around. I don't like them to wrap around because you always have to worry about them coming undone. But there you go. Nice little set. I'm enjoying doing these. Okay. I have some hand glue in here. Don't know what I did with those. Uh huh. There you are. I haven't done much. This is the very first two-tone hand warmers I did. I like to keep a darker color on the palm. I don't like to put lighter colors around here. Because you're going to be picking up and handling stuff with them. And you don't want a light color here that's going to get dirty easy. And you won't want to wear them. I have a slightly different way to make my hand warmers. Um, most people start, everybody I've seen, starts from down here and they work their way up. I start from here. I do a half double foundation stitch, 20 stitches, 24 for bigger hands. And then I do four rows of half, I do three more rows of half double. And then I start the next row and when I get to this point, I get to this point where the thumb starts, I switch from going into these stitches to a half double foundation. And I do eight stitches. Then I skip four stitches. Well, you can't see the start color in here, can you? I skip four stitches. And in the fifth stitch, I reconnect my uh, half double foundation. I do, I finish that row. I do a complete row even, second row. Boy, this is hard. Whew. There we go. I do, I finish this row. I do the second row even. Then in this row, right in the middle where the thumb is, I do a decrease here. And I bring it around to the back where I started. And I do a decrease on the back. In the next row, I do one decrease within a couple stitches of the back. And in the next row, one decrease. And that takes up the four stitches I added for the thumb. Because this part here is about the same part same size as the wrist. The wrist is going to be a little bit bigger because of the way you make it. And I do this is um, first the first thumb row even two decreases one decrease one decrease. Now see how it's brought the brought it back in. That's how your thumb comes out. This way it goes back in. So then I make two to three more rows. And the last row, I 
I do the front post, back post, front post, back post, all the way around. And I finish it with this funny little um, single crochet back stitch that I also learned from doing uh, dishcloths. You, you do a single crochet and instead of going forward, you come into the le next stitch back. Do a single crochet, come into the next stitch, do a single crochet, you're backing up. For you, this would be going ahead, this would be backing up. If you're right-handed, you make your single crochet and instead of going forward into your next stitch, you come into your the last stitch. Make a single crochet, come into the last stitch. And you'd be going around that way. So yours, yours would be twirling around in the opposite direction. And that makes a nice little finish for them. This one I attempted to do because I wanted to I wanted to put some color on here. I didn't have enough of this blue left to make a um, more of a comment on it, but it just adds a little bit of extra color to it. I've seen some gorgeous hand warmers out there. I would never wear them because they get worn once and then they get stuck in a drawer to be safe. The ones I make are ones you can wear every day no matter what. Here's the last half. I used a, a light contrast of just the teal and the turquoise with the scarf to match. And here you go. All safe and warm. So that's my little collection. Not a whole lot yet, but I'm working on it. The problem is, is I keep sending them off before I get more. So that's why I'm making a record of them. You have a great day.